Hello, everyone. Welcome to Best Fall Juice Blends. I'm Leanne. I'm the events programmer for the AC Hub. We are joined today by Melissa of Raw Pulp and Grind. AC is always connected. Tune in to our live virtual events like this one to help support local businesses and stay connected with the AC community. Before we get started, we're going to share a couple of housekeeping items. We ask that you please keep your microphone muted during the presentation. However, we encourage you to keep your camera on for some face-to-face -face time. Along the bottom of the screen, you will find a chat button. Feel free to use this feature to introduce yourself and to connect with your college community. Throughout Melissa's presentation, we welcome you to type your juicing questions in the chat, and I will read them out loud to Melissa on your behalf. If you have any questions for the event facilitators, you can also type them here. So to kick off today's event, we're gonna give everyone a fun question to answer. All you have to do is answer the question by typing in the chat, but please wait to press send until we say so, because we're all gonna send our answers at the same time. By taking part in answering the engaging question, you'll be automatically entered to win one of six $25 gift cards to Raw Pulp and Grind. We'll be announcing the six winners during the juicing session today. So the question is, what is your favorite fall flavor? So again, please type it in the chat, but please wait until everyone has had a chance to type their answer before we press send. The question again is, what is your favorite fall flavor? Give everyone a couple more seconds to type. And I'm gonna count down from three and we'll all send our answers at the same time. So three, two, one, send. I see lots of pumpkin in there, apple cider, cinnamon, beets, strawberries. That's awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing your answer. We would now like to welcome Melissa, owner and operator of Ottawa's Raw Pulp and Grind, a locally owned modern juice bar focused on fresh, healthy, plant-based foods and cold-pressed juices designed to nourish your body with pure, raw joy. Melissa, over to you to share your expertise on the best fall juice blends. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for, for hosting this and letting me come and share my passion for cold pressed juice. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about juicing in general and really, you know, why I juice and maybe why you guys might want to juice. Um, if you're curious about it, if you are a seasoned juicer, um, these are hopefully some really tip, good tips for you to be able to do this at home. And that's kind of what we're all focused on right now, as, as we all know, is we are at home and we are trying to stay healthy at home. And for me, part of that is, is getting those fruit and veggies into my body. It's really important um, to help boost your immune system. It's, it's difficult during, especially going into winter, um, we're not going to have that natural light source or vitamin D. We, we really need to uh, build up that immunity in our body. So for me, it's all about fruit and veggies. And the easiest way to get a whole bunch of fruit and veggies into your body is by juicing. So when I juice, I'm juicing per cup about three to four pounds of fruit and veggies. So you can almost get your daily serving in one, you know, eight to 10 ounce bottle of juice or um, homemade like mason jar of juice. So it's just something that I feel like a lot of people are curious about, um, especially because we are so focused on staying healthy right now during these crazy times. So, and today I really wanted to talk about fall juice blends because the fall harvest that's out there right now is amazing. And most of it is found locally. So the prices are awesome. You can find a lot of these things at your farmer's market or at your grocery store. So being able to, again, take advantage of things that are in season is especially important because you know that the quality is really good. It hasn't traveled thousands of miles to get to you. Um, so it's, it's a really important time for us to be looking at what's available locally and how we can enjoy it. So today I wanted to go over a couple of the juice blends that I like to do with the fall harvest. And the interesting thing about the root vegetables is not, you can't juice every single one of them. So the ones that I'm going to juice show you today are ones that you actually can juice. And the reason you can't, well, you could probably try if you want to, but you're not going to get a lot of yield out of them. So they're not common in juicing blends. So like the celery root, it's not really used for juicing, but ginger is one of my absolute most favorite things to juice. 
and it um, it's awesome and it helps you know ramp up those antioxidants and the anti-inflammation properties of any of the juices that we're working in. So today's blends, I'm including ginger or turmeric in most of everything. And again, turmeric might be new to some of you as well. It's basically, I don't know if you can see it, it's called the golden root. And you can tell by the inside, it's a beautiful, beautiful gold color. Um, if you've gone to coffee shops, if you've gone to my store, you're gonna see these ginger turmeric lattes that are really popular. They are awesome because you use the roots and you make a latte with them. So you're getting anti-inflammatory properties in a latte, which is kind of fun at the same time. And you can also buy at grocery stores, you know, that ginger turmeric um, powdered latte if you wanna do it at home. So I've also done that as well and it's awesome. Okay, so today I'm gonna to start off with a really simple one that I really like. And it's in the citrus family, but I'm bringing in a root vegetable, which is fennel. So I don't know if a lot of you have worked with fennel before, but you can dice it, slice it, roast it. I use it in soups. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really fun vegetable. It's got a ton of flavor. It tastes like licorice when you actually eat it raw and it softens up the, the flavor as you actually roast it. But today I'm gonna juice it. And the reason I like to include it in juice blends, especially now this time of year is number one, it's available locally, which is awesome. And number two, it is great for digestion. Believe it or not, this is one of those, you know, amazing vegetables that really helps with digestion. And if you have digestive issues like so many of us do, this is the juice for you. And then I'm also gonna include my pink grapefruit. So grapefruit is an incredible source of vitamin C. So right now you want to be getting your vitamin C into your body. It is especially important moving into the winter, moving into when we want to have our immune system really strong. So you want to boost up your vitamin C. So I'm going to juice my grapefruit with my fennel. And just so you know, when you roast it, you don't use the frauds, these. Okay, you usually cut them off and you don't use the inside stem for roasting because it's too tough. But when you're juicing, you juice everything. I don't waste a thing when I'm juicing, I juice everything. So just uh, keep that in mind. And then I'm going to blend it with ginger. So I'm gonna take a ginger root and blend it as well. So again, I, I, I will go on and on and on about my love of ginger, but ginger is especially important to, you know, help boost those antioxidant levels in your body, help with anti-inflammation. Inflammation is the root of, of all evil in, in most, uh, in your body. So you wanna really make sure you're really fighting out inflammation. And ginger is a great way to do it. So I love this blend. This is one of my kind of go-to blends because I'm getting the sweetness I'm getting the digestive properly and a little bit of flavor with the, with the fennel. And then I'm getting all the goodness of ginger. When it comes to ginger and juicing, you do not need to um, peel it. So when you cook with it, you peel it. When you juice it, you don't need to peel it. Okay, you just need to give it a good scrub. So I just always keep my scrubber with me because there's quite a few of these root vegetables that you just don't wanna take the um, skin off because it's not necessary. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to chop all this up and then I'm going to juice it and I'll let you guys do a giveaway. I just wanna mention about the citrus when you're juicing it. When you're juicing it in a juicing machine, you take the skin off, okay? You can leave the pith, which is the white part, because there's lots of goodness in there, but you do take the skin off or it's gonna be so bitter. What you can also do is find these little hand juicers at the store and they're readily available. They make it super easy to juice and you can just juice on the spot and it's just a quick twist and turn and you've got beautiful juice right away and it uses up everything and there's no waste. Okay, and you've got your juice ready to go. So again, there's two variations you can do when you're dealing with citrus. I'm going to actually put it through my juicer though so I can blend it and I'll let you guys do a giveaway. Great, Melissa, thank you. I'm gonna mute you um, just so we don't have to hear the blender going, but I'll wait until you start blending uh, okay. to do that in case uh, you have any tips to share with us while you're slicing up. Um, as you can see, I'm sorry. As you can see, I'm taking the skin off of my grapefruit. Super easy, just cut it away. And then I'm gonna slice it up. When you have a big juicer like this, this is a fast juicer. Um, you don't have to go super small. I brought my other juicer just to show you. 
This is a slow juicer. The benefit is, is it twists the fruit as opposed to slicing the fruit. So you actually get more juice when it's twisted, but it, um, you need to slice it up a lot smaller to get it into here. And it is a lot slower. So for today's purpose, I'm gonna use my fast juicer. And uh, it's very easy, easy to use. And going back, here's my fennel root. I'm just gonna slice it up. See the inside, it's really beautiful. And I will be popping it in the juicer with everything. When you're cooking with fennel and you do take the frauds off, put, this is something I do. And you can put all of your excess, you know, kind of waste into a Ziploc bag, pop it in the freezer and keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. After a while, you're gonna have a full Ziploc bag full of all this, you know, kitchen, what we call scraps, and you can make a veggie stock with it. It's amazing. So you just cover all your scraps with water, let it simmer for a good couple of hours on the stove, then let it sit overnight to let the flavors blend through and then, strain in the morning and you'll have a beautiful beautiful uh homemade stock i have some in my fridge actually i just did that yesterday so it's very yummy. okay so i'm gonna go ahead and juice because it's super noisy and i'll let you guys tuck away ginger and one full stalk of fennel and one grapefruit. So you can actually probably do two full grapefruits. I just was kind of brushing along to do it. And I've got this beautiful blend and I just mix it up, pop it in my mason jar again, you can drink right away or you could, what I like to do is double my recipes, even sometimes triple them because when you are doing it, first of all, it's a mess it's really messy to juice. So you might as well juice more so that you can have more and not have to do it more often. And when you store your cold pressed juices, you can keep them in the fridge for up to three to four days. Um, citrus longer, greens shorter. So you can easily enjoy them for days to come. And this is a delicious, healthy, vitamin C digestive, A loaded with antioxidants. And it's actually so good. It's so, so good. So again, pop it in your fridge, keep it in your mason jar. You don't need to go out and invest in mason jars. Right now, I think there's a shortage because a lot of people are at home. So I empty my pickle jars and I use those as well. Um, I empty my pasta sauces. I use those as well. You don't need to go out and buy mason jars. Just try to figure out what you have lying around the house that you can store in as long as it's airtight. And the reason you don't want air getting into any of your juices is that oxidiza oxidation that happens. Um, it's going to compromise all of the yumminess that we have created because when you are juicing, you are keeping intact all of the enzymes and nutrients that are in the fruit and veggies. The more oxygen they're exposed to, the, the more compromised they are. So you really want to make sure that you keep it um, fresh, okay? And I forgot to mention earlier about cold press juicing in general or juicing in general. The benefit in total for your body is all the fiber is taken out. So all the fiber stays here and all you're getting is the juice. What that means is your body is going to easily absorb it and it doesn't have to work. So your digestive system, when you give it things that it needs to chug along and work for, sometimes it's, it's hard. So if you wanna give your body a break from digestion and give it some time to heal, this is a great way to do it. And I think that's why you know our juice programs and we do juice cleanses are so popular is people is like, I just need to heal my body. I, even for a day, I'm just gonna juice for a day. And sometimes that's all you need just to kind of kickstart everything. You know, your gut is the center of so much. And when your gut's out of whack, everything feels out of whack. So you really, really want to, you know, make sure that you are giving your gut everything 
healthy and make it really happy and it will make you happy for sure. Okay, so that's juice number one. Okay, juice number two. Before you get started, Melissa, we do have one question in the chat. Yeah. One of our attendees has a Vita Mix blender and she's wondering if she'll be able to make juice recipes in that. Absolutely. Here, let me get something. Two sucks. Absolutely. Um, you can easily blend in a Vitamix and I've done it in a pinch as well. Um, so what you do is put all your veggies and fruit in your juicer, uh, sorry, in your blender and blend on high, high, high speed. You may need to add a little bit of water just to get it going. But once you do that, blend it on high speed till it's completely liquefied and then put it through a sieve. Okay, so what you're doing when you're doing this is you're doing exactly what my juicer is doing is you're taking the fiber out. So left in your sieve will be all the fiber and coming out below will be all the juice. So you can absolutely do it. I do celery in there sometimes because I just don't want to even bring out my juicer sometimes. So I'll just blitz it in my blender and take it my sieve out and do it that way. Great, thank you so much, Melissa. No problem. Okay. So another really great juice that I love to do this time of year, and again, I keep going back to digestion and why it's so important. And I've lost my knife. Where did my knife go? Two seconds, there we go. And this is a really great juice for digestion. We actually kind of call it a beauty glow juice. Not like our beauty glow in the store, but the reason being is because it's loaded with so much vitamin C and anti-inflammation properties, because of the lemon and ginger, it's going to help you know, make your skin look great. And that is kind of the, the premise behind, you know, putting so much vitamin C into your body as well is that you are gonna get beauty from the inside out. So this is a really nice juice if you are looking to up your vitamin C levels, give yourself a beautiful, healthy glow. That's kind of how it does. Again, I've got my lemon, I'm taking my skin off of it. And even if you were to make one small change in your lifestyle or diet, and you are new to, to doing juicing of any sort, my recommendation is to start every morning before you put anything into your body with a half a lemon squeezed into warm water. You are gonna find that number one, it's gonna really help with digestion. And number two, your body is going to just really benefit from that extra boost of vitamin C and really feel energized. And if you really want to take it up a notch, put a little sprinkle of cayenne with the lemon and the water. The cayenne is going to kickstart your metabolism for the day. Uh, it's spicy, I warn you, but it really feels good. So when we do juice cleanses it raw, all of our morning juices have cayenne because that's important when you're cleansing to get your metabolism going and the cayenne really helps you do that. So this one with lemon is lemon, green apple. And again, you don't need to take the, the center out. You just have to chop it up full. And then again, because I love ginger, I'm putting a lot of ginger in. I'm gonna put a, a big person's thumb in this one. So it's going to be awesome. And for this, blend. I'm going to use a couple of lemons. So there are the juicy fruit and veggies out there and then there's the not so juicy fruit and veggies out there. So when you're making blends, you always want to make sure you have a really good juicy one because you're going to get the yield that you want. Um, if you're juicing things like just kale, you are going to get basically like a couple of drops of juice. You get the benefits of it, which is amazing, but it really isn't going to give you what you want in the way of volume. So you want to have some juicy citrus in there like lemons or you want to have some juicy vegetables in there like cucumbers and you'll see that you're going to get the yields that you want more. And again, when you're dealing with roots, and again, I do this so much, ginger and turmeric, you really don't get a lot. So you need to ramp it up with some of the juicier fruit and veggies. So this is a great digestive beauty from the inside out juice. And we're dealing with lemon, there we go. lemon, ginger, and apple. 
super simple. And apples right now are obviously in season as well. So you're going to be able to find a ton of apples when you go out to your local store or to a farmer's market. So I use green apples today just so that my, my juice would stay green, which is like a total vanity thing. But the red apples work just as well. Uh, I just wanted the juice to be a certain color today. So, but the red apples are great. I use them all the time. Anyway, so I'm going to juice this up now and I'll let you guys maybe do another draw. lemon and ginger. Super simple, super delicious. And again, it stayed green because I kept the green apples, but you don't need green apples. So really delicious. It's going to have a bite because I put so much ginger, but I want that because when I'm drinking something that I know is loaded with, with um, the lemon and the ginger, I know I'm really doing some greatness for my body and, and it's okay if it's a little bit bitter, but that's, that's just the way I like it. If you want to soften it, put cucumber. Cucumber is 95% water. It's amazing for juicing and it will really soften any of your kind of green juices. Mm -hmm. Really good. Oh my God, bitter. Yep. That's okay. I really wanted it that way, so that's okay. So there's my juice number two. Okay. Now I'm going to do, actually, before I do my beets, the reason I'm going to keep my beets for the end is once I put my beets in the juicer, everything turns pink. Um, so, so it kind of destroys your juicing uh, colors. And today I'm, I'm obviously focused on colors for some weird reason, but it, uh, you don't want to put your juicer, you don't want to put your beets in too soon because they will, they will make everything crazy. So I want to talk about roots and I'm so glad you brought up the immunity shots because right now we spoke about, you know, really keeping your body in a really nice alkaline state to help fight off disease and infection and everything. And by, by ramping up your fruit and veggie and to intake, you can do that. You can actually just give yourself these great little booster shots as well that are so easy to make. I like to make a, quite a large chunk of it in my fridge. And then I would just take a little, you know, one or two ounce shot a day or blend it into something. And you can use it for cooking, um, it's just a really great, easy way to do it. And I want to just talk about what is in my immunity shot. So of course I use ginger because I just use ginger and everything. And then I absolutely use turmeric. And turmeric is this wonder root, as I spoke about earlier. Um, it is phenomenal for inflammation. And I really try to get it into my diet whenever I can. It, I was telling the girls, it was a little bit hard to find the root. Um, I went to like so many grocery stores this week trying to find it. So I feel like either it's selling out fast or it's just not as available um, right now for some weird reason. So I want to just let you know, like there are options out there. So you can buy powdered turmeric um, in different formats. And I just think it's something that you guys should all look at adding to your cooking as well when you're making your soups and your stocks. Um, cooking with turmeric is phenomenal. Uh, it just really, really helps boost that anti-inflammation that your body's dealing with. My one tip, in, and again, it's not my tip, it's, it's just, it's out there already, is you really need to use black pepper when you are working with turmeric because the black pepper will help your body absorb the benefits of the turmeric, okay? So when you're building the shot, you want to, and I probably actually won't even build it because it's super easy, I can just show you. Um, you want to get your turmeric, your ginger, and your lemon and your black pepper, which I forgot to grab. So your black pepper. So all you need to do is, you know, make it active by crunching in your black pepper to your shot. So this is just, again, looking for those ways to, to increase that immunity in your body. The thing I like to do once I've made that juice is I like to make a tea with it. So I will add one or two ounces to some hot, hot water and it is an amazing tea. It's, it's awesome. So you can easily add that to your um, 
kind of your arsenal of, of flu fighting and winter fighting uh, items. You can also just slice up the ginger and mince it and the turmeric and squeeze the lemon into a pot of, of water and let it steep itself and then strain it and you've got this great tea. And of course your black pepper, don't forget the black pepper. So that was just something that I wanted to, to touch on because I think it's really important. We're all looking for ways to boost our immune system right now. And these are natural remedies. This is kind of like nature's, nature's pharmacy in a way because you are you know, kind of tackling it from the inside out. So uh, anyways, that, that was my, my immune boosting speech. So I wanna move on to beets and I absolutely love beets. Some people don't love beets. Um, it's, it's a weird thing. You either love them or you hate them. I personally love them a lot and I like to cook with them. I like to juice them. They are very juice friendly. They give you lots of yield. So when you're juicing with beets, as I spoke about with some fruit and veggies, you don't need to peel them. If you want to peel them, that's your choice. Um, some people just think that it's dirty, but it's not. Uh, you just take your, your scrub and just scrub them down while you're rinsing them and you'll get all that dirt out. I like to juice the beet leaves too, because I feel like there's some real goodness in there that I would be missing if I didn't have that. So I like to juice my beet leaves as well. So, and if you don't want to juice them, again, chop them off, put them in that bag. You're going to keep in the freezer to make your stock. That would be amazing. So today I'm going to juice my beets and I'm going to do it with carrots. So Carrots, of course, right now they're in season. You're gonna find lots of them at the farmer's market or at the grocery store. The prices are great. And you, um, for this, I will be taking the frauds off. But again, I'm going to put my frauds in my Ziploc bag for my stock. And they're gonna give it a nice sweetness as well. Beets are naturally sweet, which is great. Um, but the carrots are gonna add that boost of sweetness as well. And of course, I'm gonna add ginger because I always add ginger. And then I'm going to add oranges because I want to get some more vitamin C. So I used grapefruit earlier. Now I'm going to use oranges. Um, these were such a great price. At, um, I was at the grocery store yesterday picking it up. For some reason, the navel oranges are on sale right now, which is awesome. So I was super happy about that. So this is just a really great immune boosting drink as well. So I've got my carrots. I've got my beets and my beet greens. And I've got my ginger and I've got my orange. So it is gonna be on the sweeter side and that's okay. If you wanted to you know, make it a little bit more earthy, you can add in some celery. You could definitely add in some kale and the, the, uh, the flavors really won't change because the beets and the carrots and the orange and the ginger really have such a more powerful uh, blend on their own than these softer greens. So that's a great way to actually just, you know, get those greens into your body without actually tasting the greens. So it's, uh, it's awesome that way. So I'm going to chop these up and let you guys, I think you probably have another draw or two and uh, we'll come back. We're all finished from the draw, but we do have a question in the chat and it's specifically related to should ginger be stored on the fridge or on the counter? But I'm wondering if you can touch on the best way to store a lot of the, the root vegetables that you have today. Yes. Um, I like to store them in the fridge just because I feel like I'm going to get more uh, life out of them. Uh, things that you shouldn't store together are things like garlic and onions. I like to keep my ginger in my, um, in my, what do you call those? Like those, uh, oh my gosh, those bags. Like a those, Ziploc? Yeah, a Ziploc, you can do a Ziploc or you can do the ones from the grocery store that have the little holes in them so they can breathe. That uh, is great too. So I like to keep everything kind of in its own little area. Um, root vegetables are really hardy. Like they're like a potato kind of, you, you, you really, you can't, they won't, they will last a long time. They will last a long time in your fridge. So if you see them on sale and you're not you know, you're not going to be juicing or using them for a week or so, they will still last for you, which is so nice. So that is great. Uh, same with carrots. I don't like to pre-wash any of my fruit and veggies um, and keep them in the fridge. I know a lot of people do that. I don't. I like to keep them in their natural state and then I give them a quick scrub before I use them. But again, it's a, it's a personal preference of what you, uh, what you want to do. There we go. Perfect. 
there's a recommendation in the chat for everyone um, that green bags from Debbie Meyer are awesome for storing produce. Yes, that's exactly, that's what I was trying to think of. They have those, they have them on sale right now at Metro. I think I saw like a bag for like a dollar for four of them or something crazy like that. So I picked those up for sure. And again, same thing with your orange. You're just gonna take the skin off the orange. And the pith has lots of nutrients in it. So you just want to leave it on. Just get the bitterness away from the skin. You get to watch me chop, it's very boring, but <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we're gonna pop this in the juicer and you'll see it's such a vibrant color. And beets are naturally really um, energizing. So a lot of athletes drink beet juice um, when they're training because it's a natural, wonderful source of energy. It's great for brain health, it's great for blood health which is kind of interesting when you see like, you've seen, you guys probably have all seen the studies where, where things, the vegetables actually look like the part of the body that they're good for, like the walnuts for your brain. Like it's, it's, it's fascinating actually. If you don't know that, Google it, it's kind of fun. So it's interesting that beets are so good for blood health. So here we go, I'm gonna juice it up. So you can see beets yield a lot of juice, um, especially when you combine it with oranges and with carrots. So this is a delicious, bright, beautiful, rooty juice that is perfect for all the fall harvest that we're seeing right now. So mm, it's so good. It's actually delicious. Um, it's rooty, but that's okay. It just, it, it's like a meal. And when we do juicing at raw, this is actually dinner because we, when we do juicing in order, we always put root vegetables for dinner, which is great. So I just want to show you what we've done today. I, I love doing my color, my color ways. Okay, so that is the fennel, grapefruit, and ginger. This is my apple, ginger, and lemon. And this is my root vegetable, carrot, beets, ginger, and orange. So we've got some wonderful colors going here. And again, you guys all know this, it's all over everywhere. You know, eat the rainbow, drink the rainbow. The more colorful fruit and veggies you can get into your body, the better. Great. They're absolutely beautiful, Melissa. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Um, the question in the chat, we just have one, but this is just a call out. Uh, if anyone has any questions to go ahead and type them in there. The question that's in there right now is wondering if a uh, protein powder can be added. You can, you can absolutely add protein powder, but for me, I would keep that in a smoothie because the reason you wanna drink juice in its kind of natural state is so that your body can easily absorb all of those amazing enzymes and nutrients and vitamins. Um, by adding a protein powder, I, I, I feel like you might, it might be a little bit challenging to get all those great benefits. Um, I keep it for your smoothies. I think that would be a better option for a protein powder. What you can do, and I think I spoke about this, is if you can't find turmeric root and you don't want to juice it, add it to your juices. It's fine enough that it'll blend right in, that you can add it to any of the juices as well in a powder format. And that's just a, a really easy way to boost it up. Same with cayenne. You can add cayenne to juices because it's in a natural state. One of the juices that we do at raw, um, and this is, this is kind of, I mean, it's exactly not the opposite of what I just said, but we add chia seeds um, to one of the juices in our juice cleanse only because we feel that by day, by juice number four or five, if you're juicing all day, you're kind of a little bit hungry. So you really just want to have something that 
satisfies you. So the chia seeds in a juice will kind of pop up to be like, like little bubbles. And chia is an amazing natural source of protein, but it also is a great detoxifier because it likes to kind of attach to things in your body and help to expel them. So uh, we put that in our cleanse with chia seeds just to, you know, make you feel like you're kind of eating something because you get those little bubbles and you're also getting that added benefit of the cleansing. Great, thank you. We have an attendee wondering, um, what is a good juicer to buy for a beginner? Um, for a beginner, I have to say, I really like the Breville. Um, it's just super, super user-friendly. It is, you're not going to get as high a yield as a slow juicer, but you know what, when you would just want to get that juice into you and you want to get that fruit and veggies, it's just for me, a really good juicer and look at from a cleanup perspective, Move this to the side, that is all my pulp. So all the pulp. The, all the pulp from all the fruit and veggies that I've done today is all in here. So it's super easy to clean up. And one thing that I've done as well is I've made pulp burgers. So I've taken all this pulp and I have added in some ground flax seeds and a little bit of uh, water to make it kind of gel together. And you can make patties on it. I'll send the recipe for that as well. And they are, you're getting all the benefit of all this extra fiber and in making a nice little veggie burger. The one thing that kind of sways it sometimes is if you put too much ginger in your juices when you're making that. So if you want to do your ginger separately um, before you make your patties, that really helps. You can also use this for soup stock too. You can take this and um, add water and simmer for a good couple of hours to let all it blend together. Uh, it's not going to have as many nutrients as the full fruit and veggies if you're making a stock because we've taken out all that juice, but you're getting lots of the leftover fiber and the juicer doesn't really take every ounce of juice out of it, um, especially this kind of juicer. But sorry, going back to the question, a Breville is super uh, user friendly. Great, Melissa, thank you. And I really enjoy how you're touching on ways to, to eliminate waste and to really use every bit of everything. I think that's so important. Um, the next question we have is, what are other suggestions for taste combinations with beets? With beets. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, you can actually just have beets on their own. They're delicious on their own. What I like to do um, is, it, this is nice because it's nice and sweet and it's easy to drink. When I really want to get the beets into me and I want to like load up on everything else as well, I will definitely add kale and spinach and zucchini. So I'm adding more of my green vegetables as well. And they will, that batch, if I was to add even a zucchini or a cucumber to that, my yield goes up a lot higher as well. So definitely adding greens in with beets is amazing. And, and, or just even having it on its own. And we even make a beetroot latte. So if you wanted to make your beet juice, you can actually just froth it with a nut milk and you're getting all this amazing benefits of beets in a latte. Great, Melissa, thank you so much. I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat, so we'll just finish up uh, for today, but your informative presentation was incredible. If anyone would like to check out Raw Pulp and Grind on social, we're gonna post their website um, in the chat again. And I just wanna highlight, um, they have a really extensive menu with a lot of cool juices. So if this is something you're thinking about taking up at home, um, I'd recommend visiting raw pulp and grind here in Ottawa, trying out some of their flavors, seeing what you really enjoy, and then you'll know what works for you and what you want to try at home. So thank you again, Melissa. And on behalf of the AC Hub, we want to give all attendees a huge thank you for participating in our virtual event today. Again, we did record this session and in the next couple of days, we're going to be um, putting it up on our website. We'll post the link in the chat. And as Melissa mentioned, she's gonna share with us all the ingredients um, from each recipe today, including those uh, patties. Um, so we will post them with the recording on our website as well. Our next upcoming virtual event is the Virtual Networking for International Students, which is taking place on Wednesday, October 28th at one o'clock. Details can be found on the Student Support Services website and we'll post the link in the chat for that as well. So thank you again, everyone. Um, thank you um to all our or congratulations to all the gift card winners i'll be contacting you by email after this session and we look forward to seeing you at our next virtual event thanks again everyone <laughs>